In the first part of our video, we looked at some of the most dangerous insect bites such as bed bugs, fleas, horseflies, sand flies and kissing bugs. In part 2 of our overview, we'll dive even deeper into the world of insect bites and look at other dangerous and potentially life-threatening bites you should be aware of. Let's go! Continues our way mosquitoes. Mosquito-borne illnesses are serious conditions that can be transmitted by mosquitoes, such as malaria, dengue fever, and West Nile virus. These illnesses can cause severe symptoms such as fever, headache, muscle, and joint pain, and in some cases, can even be life-threatening. Malaria is one of the most deadly mosquito-borne illnesses. It is caused by a parasite that is transmitted through the bite of an infected mosquito. The symptoms of malaria can range from fever, chills, headache, and flu-like symptoms, to severe anemia, kidney failure, and even death. Dengue fever is another mosquito-borne illness that is on the rise globally. It is caused by a virus that is transmitted through the bite of an infected mosquito. The symptoms of dengue fever include fever, headache, muscle and joint pain, and a rash. In severe cases, dengue fever can lead to bleeding, shock, and even death. West Nile virus is another serious condition that is transmitted by mosquitoes. It can cause symptoms such as fever, headache, muscle and joint pain, and in severe cases, can lead to encephalitis or meningitis. The best way to prevent mosquito-borne illnesses is by protecting yourself from mosquitoes. You can take the following steps to reduce the risk of being bitten by mosquitoes. Use mosquito repellent on exposed skin and clothing. Wear long-sleeved shirts and pants when outside. Use screens or close windows and doors to keep mosquitoes out of your home. Eliminate standing water around your home, as this is where mosquitoes lay their eggs. If you suspect you have been infected with a mosquito-borne illness, seek medical attention immediately. The next nasty bugs are ticks. Ticks are small, blood-sucking insects that can transmit serious diseases such as Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and Tick-Borne Relapsing Fever. These diseases can cause severe symptoms such as fever, headache, muscle and joint pain, and in some cases, can even be life-threatening. The first thing you should do if you suspect you've been bitten by a tick is to remove the tick as soon as possible. While removing the tick, you can take the following steps to reduce the risk of infection. Use fine-tip tweezers to grasp the tick as close to the skin's surface as possible. Pull upward with steady, even pressure. Do not twist or jerk the tick, this can cause the mouth parts to break off and remain in the skin. After removing the tick, thoroughly clean the bite area in your hands with soap and water or alcohol. Not all ticks carry diseases, and not all people who get bitten by a tick will get sick. However, it's always best to be cautious and remove the tick as soon as possible to reduce the risk of infection. If you develop symptoms such as fever, headache, muscle and joint pain after being bitten by a tick, seek medical attention immediately. It is always best to take precautions when in an area where ticks are known to live, such as wearing long pants and sleeves, using insect repellent. Next in our review are the pilots. Yellow jacket, hornet, and wasp stings can be extremely dangerous, as they can cause an allergic reaction known as anaphylaxis, which can be life-threatening if not treated immediately. Anaphylaxis is a severe, whole-body allergic reaction that can cause symptoms such as difficulty breathing, hives, swelling of the face, lips and throat, and a drop in blood pressure. These symptoms can occur within minutes of being stung. What can we do about a bite if the person is having trouble breathing? Of course! All for emergency medical services. Use an epinephrine auto-injector if you have one. Lie the person down and elevate their legs, if possible. Loosen any tight clothing to help the person breathe. Keep the person still and calm to slow the spread of the venom. 
For example, not all people are allergic to yellow jacket, hornet, and wasp venom, but those who are, can have a severe reaction even if they have been stung before without any problems. To prevent severe reactions, people with known allergies should carry an epinephrine auto-injector with them at all times. If you're experiencing mild symptoms, such as pain and swelling at the sting site, you can reduce the pain by using a cold compress, taking over-the-counter pain medication, and avoiding scratching the area. It is always best to take precautions when in an area where yellow jackets, hornets, and wasps are known to live, such as avoiding brightly colored clothing, perfumes, and sugary drinks, and being cautious when reaching into dark or hidden places. The second place will be opened by an arthropod inhabitant. Brown recluse spider bites can be extremely dangerous, as the venom from these spiders can cause necrosis, or the death of tissue, leading to severe skin ulceration and infection. These bites are often painless at first, but within a few hours, a red, swollen area will develop, sometimes followed by severe pain, itching, and fever. The bite area can have a blister or a red, white, blue or purple ring around it, and within a few days, the area will develop an open sore, ulcer, with a dark center. The first thing you should do if you suspect you've been bitten by a brown recluse spider is to seek medical attention immediately. While waiting for medical help, you can clean the bite area with soap and water. Apply a cold compress to the bite area to help reduce swelling and pain. Keep the affected limb immobilized and elevate it to reduce blood flow. Do not apply a tourniquet to the bite area. Do not attempt to suck out the venom or cut the bite area. The brown recluse spider is often referred to as the fiddleback or violin spider due to a distinct violin-shaped marking on its back. They are usually found in the South Central and Midwestern United States. And we finish our review with the Black Widow. Black Widow spider bites are extremely dangerous and require immediate medical attention. The venom of a Black Widow spider contains a neurotoxin that can cause muscle cramps, abdominal pain, and difficulty breathing. The bite itself is usually not very painful, but within a few hours, severe muscle cramps and pain will develop. The first thing you should do if you suspect you've been bitten by a black widow spider is to call for emergency medical help. In the meantime, you can take the following steps to reduce the severity of the symptoms. Clean the bite area with soap and water. Apply a cold compress to the bite area to help reduce swelling and pain. Keep the affected limb immobilized and elevate it to reduce blood flow. Do not apply a tourniquet to the bite area. Do not attempt to suck out the venom or cut the bite area. If you're experiencing severe symptoms, such as difficulty breathing or muscle cramps, your doctor may administer an anti-venom to help neutralize the effects of the venom. In some cases, a person may need to be hospitalized for treatment. It is always best to take precautions when in an area where black widow spiders are known to live, such as shaking out clothes and shoes before wearing them and being cautious when reaching into dark or hidden places. We hope you found this video informative and helpful in educating yourself on the dangers of insect bites and stings. Remember, it's important to be aware of the potential risks and to take precautions to protect yourself and your loved ones. Knowledge is power, and by being informed, you can enjoy the great outdoors without the fear of dangerous bugs. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself.